Hello card makers, it's Trisha here at Club Scrap with the Lavender Fields card kit. Um, we're going to dive right in and get going on trimming our cut aparts and filing them in an accordion pocket file folder if you've made one of these. Or if you're blessed with a lot of space then just dedicate three different piles for all of these pieces of artwork. We'll begin right away with the cut apart sheet that has the four little circles in the right corner. And um, as always, we'll follow along with the plus, si plus sign style um, registration marks here. And that's how we'll align those marks with the blade on our trimmer and just start trimming these into individual pieces. Now just use caution not to cut through any pieces of artwork. So after making just two cuts, we'll do a rotation and just trim these smaller pieces off the end here. These two uh, rectangular panels, hello, congratulations, both go into the set A or your first pocket. Then I'm going to separate these two and they both go into pocket C. And then these final two pieces. they also go into pocket C. Then I'll grab the next strip and separate them into four different elements. The first two with the bucket um, both go into pocket C and then we have two sentiments, pocket A. There are four little one inch circles here and for those I'm going to be using a circle punch um, I'm going to have to come at them from this side. Just center it up. Now if you don't happen to have a circle punch, um, simply cut along the guideline. It's very softly printed in the background. Just use the scissors to cut the, your own circle, but then what I recommend you do is um, ink the edges to disguise any imperfections in your trimming. It's hard to cut a circle with the scissors for sure. Okay, so I'll set that tr uh, punch aside, and these four little circles all go into pocket A. And this is a scrap. Our next piece to trim, we'll have the words, this isn't a thank you note, <laughs> in the upper left. So let's cut these into three strips. And then I'll rotate. All right, the two um, cut aparts that have the wreath are filed in pocket C. And then the two sentiments in pocket A. These two larger pieces go in pocket A, and this is a scrap. These four squares are all pocketed in B, and here's another little scrap. Finally, on our third sheet, we have some long strips that we'll cut, and all of those are used in pocket B, or card set B. Now there's a tiny little gray line that will help you cut this with the scissors if necessary. Or um, I happen to have a circle <laughs> that's just the right size to trim these. Uh, so I'm gonna take that over to my die cut uh, machine and roll it on through. Um, otherwise, plan B would be to just take a scissors and carefully go along those edges. The best for best results to cut a circle with the scissors, open that blade as far as you can get it so that you can have one continuous movement of the of a rotation while you're bringing the scissor blade closed. You can see I just I can't do it perfectly, but it's okay because after this we'll just distress or ink the edges a little bit. If you happen to have a little paper distressing tool, just scrape away the edges a little and no one will be the wiser that you didn't cut it with some fancy piece of equipment that you have. And sometimes if you're not crafting at home, you don't have access to all of those things. This is wonderful in a pinch. All of these circles are used in card set B. We have a little bit of trimming to do to create some doubled up panels for our card bases. So I'm gonna have you begin by locating a special panel for card set A. It's a long and narrow purple panel. It measures four by seven and three quarters. Let's trim each one of these panels horizontally and you can do this two panels at a time. Trim it horizontally at five and a quarter. 
That will make a larger panel and a smaller panel, both used in card set A. And repeat for the second pair, horizontally at five and a quarter. Next, you have some stone panels. It's a pretty big rectangle. We're gonna cut these vertically. So place two at a time if you'd like in your trimmer and we'll cut at two and three quarters. This should make equally sized panels and that will be used in card set B and repeat that for the other pair. Finally, you have a six by seven inch uh, dark purple panel. Let's confirm that six by seven, yes. And we will trim this horizontally at four and a quarter. That makes a wide nesting panel and a narrow panel. So the other pair horizontally at four and a quarter. All of this gets filed in pocket C. The remaining pieces that you have here all need to be either scored or filed, so let's get out our score pal. Look for the long, narrow stone card bases. These measure four and a quarter by 11. We'll score each one twice. Now we'll score it two and three quarters first. And then I want you to flip the card bottom to top, or top to bottom, however <laughs> you want to look at it, and then score again at five and a half. Now the reason for that flip is because of how we're going to construct this card. The first fold will be to take the, the bump of the score and put it on the inside of the fold at the center of the card and make your crease. But then we want to fold back on this fold that ends up in the center at the front of the card and that's why we want to flip the card when we make the score line so that the bump of the score will always be on the inside of the fold. And that is the base uh, panel or base card for set A. And we'll repeat that scoring for the remaining three panels, two and three quarter, flip, five and a half. Next we'll take this, the largest piece in your kit. This is that lavender plane and we're going to um, score it twice to make a larger gatefold card. So I want you to place this in your score pal so that the texture side of the paper is facing up. Score at three and eight. This paper is not as heavy as the stone color that you scored earlier, so just be a little more gentle. Whereas with the stone paper, you'll need to be more firm with your scoring. These are the bases for card set B. You should have two styles of green left. Let's start with the largest green color, and we're going to score it horizontally at four and a half. All of these go in C. Now we have this last piece. We'll score horizontally at three and a half inches. What this will do is create a one inch flap. And you'll notice that the paper bends easily in this direction. And that's why we cut the paper the way we did so that you'd be scoring and folding with the grain. All of these get filed in pocket C as well, and that concludes all the prep work for our card making. We'll just be making one prototype of each card since they're all assembled uh, quite similarly for each set. And this is set A, and remember we made the stone panel with um, by folding in half and then folding back on that center score line to make two flaps. Now this is actually going to be a stand-up card, and um, it's really a clever mechanism that's fun to uh, replicate again and again. So let's get started with this one. Um, if you happen to have a stash of mini brads in a neutral color, I happen to have this cute little lavender uh, colored brad, um, you can use that if you'd like, or you can just put adhesive on the upper half of this circle before you attach it to the panel. So this is a four by five and a quarter inch dark purple panel that we trimmed earlier. I'm gonna place it on a piece of cork and use a paper piercing tool to just pierce a hole. And then I'll I'll bring my brad into the middle there and splay the ends on the back. Spread out those two prongs. Okay, prep work done for that. And you'll notice that this panel fits perfectly right into the back of the stand-up card base here. So 
just center that with adhesive. Okay, now for this other panel, you have a couple of options. I did two things. For three of the cards, I just simply took some of this really pretty um, fiber and just simply wrap it around the bottom edge of this purple panel and then tie it in the knot. Trim the ends. That's nice and easy. Now we can go ahead and attach this to the outer front flap of the stand-up card. This is the sentiment for the inside of the card and I recommend attaching it near the bottom of the inner card base. Finally, We'll attach our hello just above where the ribbon line is because we, we don't want this too low on the card. We want it to be able to stand up. Now, here, this is a critical thing, and we talk about this a lot, is if I put adhesive on the entire hello panel, I've just ruined my functionality of the card. So be sure, if you want to like mark it, you can just put a little line. Like That's about where I need to stop with my adhesive. Just be very aware of the target destination for your panel. When the recipient receives their card, they will open up, see the greeting inside, and then the idea is to tuck the top of this um, art panel behind the, the brad, and then it stands up on its own. You'll make three more just like this one. What I suggest too, you know, when I'm making these prototypes is of course you have the envelopes provided. So if you want to just make one along with me and get back to the others um, at a later time, take all of the remaining pieces that you've prepared, slide them into the corresponding envelope along with your prototype, and you're all set to make the rest of your cards when you're ready. Let's move on to set B. For our next card, we are going to be using the large lavender panel. And by following our protocol of putting the bump of the score in the inside of the fold, we will fold to create what I would call a, an uneven gatefold card, meaning that um, there are two flaps, but they do not meet directly in the middle as a maybe a gatefold card would. They overlap slightly, which I think looks nice. Because earlier we trimmed these stone panels in half, um, we're going to have two panels that will sit beautifully onto the two front flaps of the card base. Next I'll take um, one of these belly bands, and what I like to do with these is just kind of place them on the card at the center so it's roughly horizontal, and then wrap it around so that you have a seam that will meet in the middle on the, on the front of the card, believe it or not. Make sure there's enough wiggle room that you can slide this on and off the card in order to open it. And what I typically do is just try to make it so that the seam lands in the middle. For adhesive, I will open one flap. I'll add a touch on, this, on the top of this end and a little touch of adhesive on the other edge. And when I bring them together, they're going to they'll adhere perfectly. Make sure those lines of the artwork line up. Now, enter the cute little purple doily. What you'll do is put it behind the band centered. Then take one of your circular pieces and apply adhesive over the whole thing. And since it rotates any old way, it doesn't matter just as long as it's centered over the doily. We're creating a, a belly band sandwich. <laughs> so the belt goes around the card and there's no seam visible anywhere. You have the doily on the back and the greeting on the front with the belly band sandwiched in between. So then when I open the card, I'll add the sentiment, you deserve all the best. Maybe I'll just put it maybe on the right here. And then you close the flaps and slide your band in place. Now, if you happen to have stamps or you um, choose to re receive the stamps that coordinate with the Lavender Fields collection, these stone panels would be beautiful uh, with some stamping in the background as well. 
that's set B, and all the remaining three cards are constructed in the same manner. Let's move on to our fun set now, set C. I've taken the contents of pocket C, dumped it completely out, and here's what I'm left with um, to get started on my card. I've got the larger green card base, a smaller green scored panel, and then a large and small purple panel, one of the uh, lavender sprigs, an inner and outer greeting. And in case you're wondering, the instructions always will tell you what sentiment corresponds with which card in the instructions. I wanted to quick show you also, we'll be using the canvas ribbon, but um, earlier this week, Kay came into my office to show me that she was able to stamp uh, with club scrap, amethyst, and I believe this was leaf ink, um, stamp this image directly onto the ribbon without any bleeding or anything. It just really looked cool. So I just wanted to quick share that with you. Anyway, um, so let's get some card assembly going and then I'll show you a really fun trick with the lavender sprig. We'll begin by folding, bump of the score inside of the fold as always. If you have a bone folder, you can crisp up that crease. And then we have this other piece as well. We're gonna create that small one inch tab. So we have the larger purple panel, and then this is designed to rest on the lower right edge of the vertical purple panel. So once you have it positioned, just flip it over pull back the tab, add your adhesive, and put it back in place. Done. Then we'll put some adhesive on the back of the purple panel and attach it to the card base so that this is in the lower right corner and the flap of the card is on the left. You wanna make sure everything's oriented correctly. So the design is supposed to be that this goes in first and then this can layer on top. And of course I've added this additional dark purple panel on the left flap of the card. Oh, it's just so beautiful, so elegant. Okay, now on the inside of the card, I'm going to add this sentiment so that it's tucked behind the flap that we've added. For the greeting on the outside, I'm going to take my um, paper distressing tool and add a little bit of a frayed edge to this and I think it really um, matches nicely with the style of the frame boxes that we're using in this collection and that's why I've decided to just add that touch here but it's completely optional. And center that right into the, onto the green panel. Now, we have this funky, really cool looking sprig. And honestly, I didn't realize they were gonna be this big when I ordered them, they're really nice and big. Um, but that can pose a problem with bulkiness as well. So I started out by just eliminating, by pulling off this somewhat strange green leaf thing. And I just didn't use that anywhere. Then I realized, you know, this is going all the way around with these little sprigs on here. And I wanted to eliminate about half so if you look real carefully, you can see all the tiny little things. They're almost like threads that the little lavender sprigs are stuck to. And I decided to remove half of them with the scissors. So just bear with me. It will all make sense. Now, if you don't mind making a little bit of a mess. But I just am cutting along the stem and removing about 50% of what's on this sprig. So now I have a nice flat surface. I'm going to take a little bit more off the top. <laughs> Give it a haircut. There, that's nice. So you can't tell I've done that. It did make just a tiny little bit of a mess, but not any, certainly not to the scale that glitter is going to do. And I want you to save all of those little pieces that you trimmed from the sprig. Then take a piece of this sweet canvas ribbon and in this kind of in the spot where we had the stem that we removed, we're just going to tie, just tie it in a knot on there and trim the ends. I mean, nothing could be easier or sweeter. Okay. Now, of course, this card is definitely more suitable, suitable for hand delivery versus mailing. So if you really do want to put this in the mail and don't want to worry about this, don't add it. Just maybe put it on a different card. 
Now there's also a wire base underneath the sprig, so I'm just going to shape it a little bit so that the sprig sort of wraps its way around the card and positions itself where, where I want it. Nice. Okay. Last step is to have something heavy handy and our book binding glue. And I just squeeze glue along that side that you trimmed away over the ribbon and everything all onto the sprig and then place it exactly where you planned on your card base and just press and hold it for a second. Let that glue start bonding with the paper. Then what I recommend you do is just place this under a heavy object until the glue dries completely clear. It doesn't take overnight or anything, maybe just, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, but it will definitely help to put a heavy object on here to secure everything in place. Now what are you supposed to do with the big pile of these little circles, <laughs> spheres, they're little spheres when you're done with your cards? Um, I want to show you what I ended up doing and it's, it's just so incredibly sweet, I can't even handle it. <laughs> um, I took some of our book binding glue and you can do this on any of the cards from this set because they all have a little bit of lavender on them and I took one of my favorite tweezers here and just pick up some of those sprigs and lay them onto the dispensed glue. It doesn't even matter if those little those little hairs are still on them because it looks very natural once it's been placed. If you have a big chunk of them and you want to you know, break off a smaller piece, by all means, that's what you can do. And continue to work your way around the wreath by placing the little pieces. And then when you're done, you'll have this just darling little wreath. Lots of dimension. Anybody would love this. It's, well, I would say more the feminine persuasion <laughs> would like it. But it's just a beautiful uh, finishing touch to these cards. And then once you've adorned all the cards that you're in the mood to adorn, you can go ahead and dispose of the rest of the remnants or save them for later. So with this set, you've made four gorgeous uh, stand-up tent cards four beautifully adorned 5 by 7 gatefold cards, and then these really sweetly embellished A6 cards, and all of that for $16.95. If you've been to a card store lately and looked at the prices, there is no better value than the Club Scrap card kit. If you haven't already, I hope you give this membership a try, and I'll see you next time.